And we are back. I hope you listened to some wonderful praise and worship music. Um, and we're back. And we're going to start with the Torah portion. And this is entitled Bereshit. Um, and we are going to be reading Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, to Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. So buckle up. This is a very interesting um, tour portion. There's a lot of um, a lot of things that happen. Uh, of course, creation begins, and also uh, we encounter the evil one who messes up everything, and and it kind of explains why our world is the way it is today. Uh, when we actually look at this segment. So buckle up, and we are going to begin the Torah portion, bar, uh, Parashat Bereshit, starting with creation in six days, chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was chaos and waste. Darkness was on the surface of the deep, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. So God distinguished the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So there was evening and there was morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the water. Let it be for separating water from water. So God made the expanse, and it separated the water that was below the expanse from the water that was over the expanse. And it happened so. God called the expanse sky. So there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. Then God said, let the water below the sky be gathered to one place. Let the dry ground appear, and it happened so. God called the dry ground land. And the collection of the water he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout grass, green plants, yielding seeds, fruit trees, making fruit, each according to its species, with seed in it upon the land. And it happened so. The land brought forth grass, green plants, yielding seed each according to its species, and trees making fruit with a seed in it, each according to its species. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. Then God said, Let lights in the expanse of the sky be for separating the day from the night. They will be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. They will be for lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the land. And it happened so. Then God made the two great lights. The greater light for dominion over the day and the lesser light as well as the stars for dominion over the night. God set them in the expanse of the sky to shine on the land and to have dominion over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. Then God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. Let flying creatures fly above the land, across the expanse of the sky. Then God created the large sea creatures, and every living creature that crawls with which the water swarms according to their species, as well as every winged flying creature, according to their species. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them by saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the water in the seas. Let the flying creatures multiply on the land. So there was evening and there was morning a fifth day. Then God said, Let the land bring forth living creatures according to their species livestock, crawling creatures, and wild animals according to their species. And it happened, so God made the wild animals according to their species, the livestock according to their species, and everything that crawls on the ground, each according to its species. 
And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them roll over the fish of the sea, over the flying creatures of the sky, over the livestock, over the whole earth, and over every crawling creature that crawls on the land. God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the land and conquer it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the flying creatures of the sky, and over every animal that crawls on the land. Then God said, I have just given you every green plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the whole land, and every tree which has the fruit of, it, of a tree yielding seed. They are to be food for you. Also for every wild animal, every flying creature of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the land, which is life, every green plant is to be food. And it happened so. So God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. So there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Chapter 2, Shabbat for Rest. So the heavens and the earth were completed. Along with their entire array, God completed on the seventh day his work that he made, and he ceased. And on the seventh day from all his work that he made, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. For on it he ceased from all his work that God created for the purpose of preparing. So this is known as the Shabbat. Um, and later, as we read in Exodus, he sanctified this for the people. Humanity in Gan Eden. There, these are the genealogical records of the heavens and the earth when they were created at the time when Adonai Elohim, the Lord God, made land and sky. Now, no shrub of the field was in the land yet, and no green plants of the field had sprouted yet, for Adonai Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the land, and there was no one to work the ground. But a mist came up from the land and watered the whole surface of the ground. Imagine that. This mist is coming up from the ground, watering the whole surface. There's no rain coming down from the sky. There's no one tilling the ground. but yet. God provided that mist that came up from the land to water the whole surface of the ground. Then Adonai Elohim formed the man out of the dust from the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. So the man became a living being. Then Adonai Elohim planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Then Adonai Elohim caused to sprout from the ground every tree that was desire, desirable to look at and good for food. Now the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to the water to water the garden and from there it divided and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon and that's spelled P-I-S-H-O-N. The one that winds around the whole land of Havilah where there is gold, the gold of that land is good. Bdellium and lapis lazuli stones are also there. The name of the second river is Gihon, G-I-H-O-N, and it winds around the whole land of Cush, C-U-H-S. The name of the third river is Tigris, T-I-G-R-I-S, and this runs east of Assyria, and the fourth river is rivers is Euphrates. Then Adonai Elohim took the man and gave him rest in the Garden of Eden in order to cultivate and watch over it. Then Adonai Elohim commanded the man saying, from all the trees of the garden you are most welcome to eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you must not eat, for when you eat from it you most assuredly will die. Now know that um, Adonai is addressing the man, Adam. He's not addressing Eve here because 
apparently Eve is not in the picture yet. Not quite yet. Then Adonai said, it is not good for man to be alone. Let me make a well-matched helper for him. Adonai Elohim had formed from the ground every animal of the field and every blind creature of the sky. So he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called them, each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all of the livestock and to the blind creatures of the sky and to the, all the animals of the field. But for the man, he did not find a well-matched helper for him. Adonai Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. So, so Adonai Elohim performed the very first surgery um, right here. Spiritual, yeah, spiritually, but also physically, because he took the rib out of Adam. Adonai Elohim built the rib, which he had taken from the man, into a woman. Then he brought her to the man. Then the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh from my flesh. This one is called woman, for from man was taken this one. This is why a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. From innocence to shame, the last um, verse of chapter 2 is, Now both of them were naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Chapter 3, But the serpent was shorter than any animal of the field that Adonai Elohim made. So it said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from all the trees of the garden? So he was toying with the words um, to the woman. The woman said to the serpent, Of the fruit of the trees we may eat, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat of it, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Now we need to look back at the words that he actually said to Adam. From all the trees of the garden you are most welcome to eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you must not eat. For when you eat from it, you most assuredly will die. He did not say even anything about touching it. Um, that was added to. So the serpent said to the woman, you most assuredly, assuredly won't die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like a God, like God, knowing good and evil. Now the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was a thing of lust for the eyes and that the tree was desirable for imparting wisdom. So she took of its fruit, and she ate. She also gave to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. And there's a lot that has happened right here. So, you know, the serpent actually allured her, got her to look at it, got her to question, to doubt, to, to do all kinds of things here, um, and toyed with her thought process there. To the point that she looked at it and saw, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. Let's just see if he's right. And so she made a choice. However, Adam, the man, um, was there and he knew right from wrong as well. He actually heard God tell him uh, to not take of this tree. But he did not stop this from happening. And he actually took it as well. So he was deliberately disobedient to God. Um, the woman was tricked. Um, and, you know, uh, actually did what she shouldn't have done. Um, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves loin coverings. And they heard the sound of Adonai Elohim going to and fro in the garden in the wind of the day. So the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Adonai Elohim in the midst of the tree of the garden. Then Adonai Elohim called to the man and he said to him, where are you? Then he said, your sound, I heard it in the garden and I was afraid because I am naked and I hid myself. Then he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? of which I commanded you not to eat. Then the man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. So he wanted to place blame on the woman. Um, 
Adonai Elohim said to the woman, what did you do? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Adonai Elohim said to the serpent, because of this, cursed are you above all the livestock and above every animal of the field. On your belly will you go and dust will you eat in the days of your life. And this is a very key, key, key verse coming up. And this is speaking of Yeshua. I will put animosity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he will crush your head and you will crush his heel. So that's speaking of Yeshua on the cross already um, right here. Um, so that made the evil one shudder because this was already, you know, a plan put in motion uh, for Yeshua. But he didn't know who that would be. Um, to the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pain from conception to labor. To pain will you give birth to children. Your desire will be towards your husband, yet he must rule over you. Then to the man, he said, because you listened to your wife's voice and ate of the tree, which I commanded you, saying, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. With pain will you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles will sprout for you. You will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow will you eat food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you will return. Now, interestingly enough, when they were in the, in the, in the garden, they didn't really need to work for anything. It was already provided for them by God, and they commune with God all the time, every day. So now God is saying, no, you're going to have to work the, the land to get, get food. Um, so now Adam named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Adonai Elohim made Adam and his wife tunics of skin, and he clothed them. Then Adonai Elohim said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So now, in case he stretches out his hand and takes also from the tree of life and eats and lives forever, Adonai Elohim sent him away from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. And he expelled the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he had cherubim dwell along with the whirling sword of flame to guard the way of the tree of life. So they could not come back because there were angels, uh, there were cherubim actually set there um, to guard. So now we have chapter four, Cain and Abel's blood. Now the man had relations with Eve, his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, I produced a man with Adonai, then she gave birth again to his brother Abel and became a shepherd of flocks, while Cain became a worker of the ground. So it happened after some time that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Adonai, while Abel, he also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. Now Adonai looked favorably upon Abel and his offering, but upon Cain and his offering, he did not look favor favorably. Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then Adonai said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, it will lift. But if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the doorway. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, while they were in the field. Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then Adonai said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? I don't know. He said, am I my brother's keeper? Then he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. So that was the first murder that was actually committed was by Cain. And yes, there was blood, blood spilt and, um, and was crying out to Adonai. So now cursed are you from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. As often as you work the ground, it will not yield its crops to you again. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to Adonai, 
my iniquity is too great to bear. Since you expelled me today from the face of the ground, I must be hidden from your presence. Then I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Anyone who finds me will kill me. But Adonai said to him, In that case, anyone who kills Cain is to be avenged seven times over. So Adonai put a mark on Cain so that anyone who found him would not strike him down. Then Cain left Adonai's presence and dwelled in the land of wandering east of Eden. Cain was intimate with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Now, that's not the same Enoch that we're going to see later on. This is this is Cain's son, Enoch. And he was building a city, and he named the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And to Enoch was born Irad. Irad fathered Mahujael, and Mahujael fathered Methushael, and Methushael fathered Lamech. Now, Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of the first one was Ada, and the name of the second one was Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal. He was the pioneer of tent dwellers with livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the pioneer of all who skillfully handled string instruments and wind instruments. Now Zillah also gave birth to Tubal Cain the forger of every kind of bronze and iron tools. Tubal Cain's sister was Nama, N-A-A-M-A-H. Lamach said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, Lamach's wives. Listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me and a boy for bruising me. If Cain is to be avenged seven times, then Lamach, Lamach, 77 times. Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and she named him Seth. For God has appointed me another seed in place of Abel, since Cain killed him. To Seth also was born a son. He named him Enosh. Then people began to call on Adonai's name. Chapter 5 is the book of genealogies. This is the book of the genealogies of Adam. When God created Adam in the likeness of God, he made him male and female. He created them and he blessed them and called them Adam when he created them. Adam lived 130 years, then fathered a son in his likeness after his image and named him Seth. Then the days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all Adam's days that he lived were 930 years and then he died. Seth lived 105 years, then fathered Enosh. Seth lived 807 years after he fathered Enosh, and he fathered sons and daughters, so all Seth's days were 912 years, then he died. Enosh lived 90 years, then fathered Kenan. Enosh lived 815 years after he fathered Kenan, and he fathered sons and daughters, so all of Enosh's days were 905 years, and then he died. Kenan lived 70 years, then fathered Mahalalel. Kenan lived 840 years after he fathered Mahalalel, and he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Kenan's days were 910 years, then he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years, then fathered Jared. Mahalalel, Mahalalel lived 830 years after he fathered Jared, and he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Mahalalel's days were 895 years and then he died. Jared lived 162 years, then fathered Enoch. Jared lived 800 years after he fathered Enoch, and he fathered sons and daughters, so all of Jared's days were 962 years, and then he died. Enoch lived 65 years, then fathered Methuselah. Now Enoch walked with God continually for 300 years after he fathered Methuselah, and he fathered sons and daughters, so all of Enoch's days were 300 65 years. And Enoch continually walked with God. Then he was not there because God took him. Now we know Enoch did not die. He was translated. I am going to pause this here and then come back with, with the next part, which will be part three of the audio piece of this. But 